Hey everyone, um, nice to be here, a bit nervous, but uh, let's see how this goes. Um, so I'm here to talk about building components, not apps. Um, so I'm sure we all know what a UI component is. You know, it's a button, a drop down, an input field, whatever you like. Um, so we've kind of gone through a transformation journey over the last year at Climate Clever, and it's been a hell of an experience. Um, so I'm here to sort of share the compounding returns that we got um, from this process. Um, but I'm actually going to start a bit further back so you can kind of understand the journey that we went on. So building UI is hard, right? For any of you who like back-end development is where all the hard work is, that's where all the cool stuff happens, building UI is incredibly difficult. You've got multiple browsers to support, you know, multiple different bits of hardware. If you're going to build a desktop app, you've got Mac, you've got Windows. If you're going to build mobile apps, you've got iOS. You know, so many times I've been frustrated trying to pull off a uh, perfect 60 frames per second infinite scroll view on iOS only to fail miserably. So it's, building UI is hard. I mean, so many times I've had a working web app only for it to not work on Internet Explorer. Um, and as a company that deals with schools, they are persistent in ensuring me that Internet Explorer is the go-to browser of the modern age. Um, <laughs> so I just stopped supporting it. That was how I fixed that. Um, <laughs> so about five years ago, I fell out of love with building front end. And I just was like, right, no more building front end. I'm going to go and just work on servers, build API, you know, have a great time. Uh, and if I ever did touch front end, it was only ever to do networking code. Um, I did fall in love with Realm, which was quite fun, um, but that's another story. Um, so about two years ago, um, no, no, maybe three, three years ago, I found React. And React kind of saved, saved me. Like I, I started to love building UI again. It was really fun. Um, and it combines two of my most favorite things, uh, great development experience and JavaScript. And the fantastic thing about JavaScript is it sort of lowers that accessibility level. So you can build an app for any platform really easy, which at the end just benefits our users. So I started using React in all my projects. And just under two years ago, I joined Climate Clever. And I'd worked for them before as a contractor, learned so many lessons from building our MVP, uh, and the version before that, which was just Google Sheets and uh, Google Docs, you know, true bootstrapping MVP. Um, and we rebuilt our entire app in React, which was fantastic. It worked amazingly well. It was so fantastic. I just cannot get over how easy it was to build such a huge application and have it be responsive. All the schools were really happy, because at this point, we only had an app for schools. Um, and everything was sunshine and rainbows. I went to sleep at night without a care in the world. It was great. But then we started building our home app, and that's when everything went downhill, and I started getting gray hair. Um, because there was only two engineers at this point, so there was me and Ryan, and a data scientist, but he doesn't code, so he was useless. Um, <laughs> and, and we're sat there building the home app, and we're repeating ourselves, and I'm like, there is so much code in here that we've got in the school app, and, it was frustrating. I was so angry at myself. And I started researching how to share code. And there was no solid way to do it. It was really difficult. Uh, in the end, the best bet that I had was to create an NPM package for every component in our school app, which is crazy. I would need to hire a developer just to manage the packages. And as a startup, you know, we don't really have trillions of dollars floating around, so that's off the, off the table. But then I found Bit. Now, Bit is fantastic. Uh, think of it as like the GitHub or NPM of UI components. So you can go on to Bit, you can find a UI component you like, a button, an image view, you name it, whatever you like. And you can just install it in your project using NPM and Yarn. Now, they have React components on there, Vue components on there, uh, a few other libraries as well. Can't remember off the top of my head. Highly recommend you check it out. And this seemed to solve all my problems, because we could privately upload our components as well, and we could version them. So me and Ryan just 
start cramming all our components from the school app into Bit as fast as we can. We separate out the logic so we can upload more of them. Um, and Bit does this wonderful thing of like versioning each component. And if you update one component, any component that is dependent on that automatically updates. And it's absolutely fantastic. And you have this wonderful online cloud library that you can sort of scroll through and view all your components, view the different version numbers, uh, view the tests if there are any. Um, it's just wonderful. And so we uh, uploaded all our components, and then we started sharing them between our apps. So you know, we did most of the development in the school app project, uploaded all the UI, downloaded them into the home app project, added the networking, added the databasing, the persistent storage, and all that jazz. And off we go. We had two apps. And we were like three days or four days from release or something for the home app, so I was pretty excited. Um, but then I came into work one day, and Ryan was messing around with hooks. Now, we'd been uh, predominantly been using class components with only a few function components. But he was like, hey, Alex, check this out. I've got this hook. You know, it just returns the user's bills. The user doesn't have to do, you know, the developer doesn't have to do anything. They just implement this hook, and they get all the bills. They don't have to deal with the persistent storage. They don't have to deal with the networking. They don't have to know how any of that works. You know that this hook just returns the bills. And I was like, that's fantastic. So that's really great. So I went home that night, and it was mulling over. And then I do what I do best, which is cause absolute chaos. And Ryan comes to work the next day, and I'm like, we're replacing everything with hooks. Um, <laughs> so we, we did it. We, we ripped out all the class components. We made them function components. And we just built hooks for everything. You know, Hooks for logging in, signing up, uh, fetching data, formatting data. You name it, we had a hook for it. And we sort of changed the way that we approached it. And we were like, well, if you think about it, these hooks or functions are components too. You know, Something that gives me the bills, it's still a component. It's just not a UI component. And then we combined this with Storybook. Um, if you don't know what Storybook is and you develop front end, please reevaluate your life choices. Because um, Storybook is fantastic. So combining Bit and Storybook, we suddenly had this wonderful cloud library where we could scroll through our components. And this kind of changed our philosophy a bit. So our philosophy is a component is an app. Because the way it works for us, you can go into our online library and look at a button. And everything that that button needs to work is there. But the thing is, you can go to the section where you look at bills in our component library, and it works. You can scroll through the bills. You can edit the bills. You can delete the bills. It just works. It doesn't need to be inside an app to work. It works wherever it is, because it's just built of other components. And other components just work. Um, and, and, and this is, it sounds a bit weird, but it's, it's quite fantastic. So a really good example is we can build, let's say, a page on our web application that confirms your email. Right? So works all well and good. We drop it in our school app, and all of a sudden, it sort of changes its look and feel, because it's got a component in it that listens to its environment. And bam, it you know, looks like our school app. It's got the school colors, the school configuration, the school logo. We drop it in the home app, and it just works. Now everyone in the home app can confirm their email too. And it changes its appearance, and it makes network requests. And we don't have to worry about anything as a developer, because I know whoever built the components that make up that page you know, tested them, they work. So logic becomes a component, too. And the best part of this is with predominantly just two engineers, although I must say a big thank to our two juniors that joined us just under six months ago, we have nine apps in production. And that took us about a year and a half to do. Um, so we've got five web apps, uh, four mobile apps. Um, and by January, this coming January, we'll have one more web app uh, for businesses, maybe mobile if they force us to. Um, and that's all powered by components. And the way that works is we have one huge master repo on the left. And this is where we build all the base UI components. It's where we build the logic components as well. Um, so databasing, networking, data formatting, any weird cool functions that happen in the app, they all get done in the master repo. And then we just install them using NPM in the following web projects, and you're good to go. So it becomes like a composition of music. You want to build an app. It's like, well, what 
do I want to do? You know, just pull off the full few components here and there, whack them together, you've got an app. There you go, off you go. Um, and then we import a lot of these components into our mobile. And the reason we have a mobile master is because we don't share UI between our web and our mobile, because we're firm believers in creating an experience that a user expects on a device. Um, and so that means building some native uh, UI components. Um, but we share all the logic, so all the databasing, all the networking, all those components just plug in in the mobile, into the UI, and off you go. So we hardly ever repeat code. So we sort of change the way we look at things, and we base things on features. So it's like, what do I want to build? How's that going to work? Um, let's say, you know, I want to build a feature that lists all the user's actions. So we build a component to fetch that data. We build a component to persist that data. And then we build a component to represent that data. And we combine them together to make another component. And then if the API ever update, updates, we just update the component that lies underneath. And then that updates all the other components. And then it updates in all the other repositories. And it's just that easy. So we don't think about it as an app. We think about it as a component. Um, and like I said, we just we sort of arrange these in the app using dependency injection or passing values into functions um, or props in React, if any of you are familiar with it. You know, so you initialize your main app, and then you just inject the components you want, which made up other components. And then there you go. You've got nine apps. <laughs> and no worries. Um, so yeah, so we gained a lot of benefits from this. Uh, the first thing is easier bug detection. Because we break things down into small components, it's really easy to identify bugs um, straight away in development, because everything is really small and compound. Um, it also means that you know if you pick up a bug, uh, you fix it, and it's fixed everywhere. Um, the other, the flip side of that is if you have a bug, there's likely there is a bug everywhere. So there is two sides to that coin. It's not perfect. Um, it also means we get faster release times. It's really easy for us to uh, ship features, build a new feature, drop it in, off you go, NPM update. It's all good. Um, and it's also much easier for people to understand our project. Um, so we have quite an extensive API that's powered by a few microservices and a very complex app. You know, um, we, for those of you who don't know, we help people uh, understand their carbon footprint, reduce their carbon footprint, and save money on their bills. Um, I say bills. It used to be utility bills, but we also do travel and uh, flights and paper and all this other stuff now as well. Um, and so because of that, we're in so many different areas. And so we have a really, really big system, and we collect a lot of data. So because everything's broken down into components, when you start at Climate Clever as a new developer, for example, by just working on a few components at a time, you slowly gain a better understanding of our system. You know, There's no need to read hundreds and hundreds of pages of documentation, because you can slowly just work on the components and gain a better understanding. Uh, it also makes remote easier. Um, I'm sure many of you had the same issue when COVID hit. We went fully remote, um, which, you know, if you haven't really done before, for a lot of people can be really difficult. But it's not so easy when everything is broken down. Um, yeah, so we feel more empowered, more happy, because it's easier to do things. I'm not going to lie to you and pretend everything is stress-free. Um, I'm a developer. There's always a few things that cause stress. But all in all, we managed to build nine apps with a really small team. And I think that's a testament to this way of looking. Um, and that's my talk. Thanks very much.